As mentioned earlier, it's unfortunate that the coaches and players can't join us tonight um, due to the AFL's health and safety protocols. But Matthew Nix is joining us via Zoom. Nixie, are you with us? I am, Source. I am. That's Thanks good. for having me on. Apo apologies to everyone in the room for, for not being there this evening. I, I would love to be there in person. As Source has pointed out, it's, uh, it's uh, an interesting time at the moment and um, we, we're trying to limit risks as we speak and, and this is one of those. So we'd love to be in the room, but um, yeah, really happy to give you an update on where we are from a pre-season point of view. We've put a hell of a lot of work in this pre-season and, and taken our game to another level. Probably didn't see that on the weekend. I think, you know, a lot of people are looking at the game on the weekend, the end result, probably being a little disappointed. But what I can tell you is we, we took a young group over. Uh, we played against the quality opposition in trying conditions and we'll learn a lot from that game. Um, we've had a challenging last two weeks of the pre-season. We've been uh, put under a number of health protocols which have, have limited our uh, selection of players, but we will get those players back and available this week. So really looking forward to a, a good hit out and to a really important hit out against the mob from across the road. So from a pre-season point of view, having Darren Bird just come on board, um, you know, we're, we're excited about what he brings to the group. And what I can say uh, without speaking for Darren is that he's extremely excited about what he's seen so far with, with our young group of players. Uh, you know, they're right up there with some of the best he's worked with from a fitness point of view. And it, it's now, the key to our game plan and our, I guess us being able to play our DNA week in, week out is for those guys to just add consistency to that. I'm really confident the work we've done over the last couple of months, Source, um, is going to put us in a pretty good position. Thanks, Nixie. Um, some of our members have put forward some questions for you tonight. First question is from Michael Grant. We have seen a few glimpses over the last two years, but what is going to define the Crows game plan in season 2022? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question, and we have. And, and we've come off a number of games and been really proud of what we put out there as a playing group or as an organisation. And you can see it in, the, in our members and our supporters who get, who get to the games. You can see it in their faces when you walk off the ground that, uh, you know, we put out our DNA, and I, I, I use that word a lot. It's, it's our DNA. It's the style of footy we want to play, and it's an exciting brand. You know, we're, we're there to entertain. We want to play an in-your-face style of football where the opposition leave knowing that it's, we've been hard to play against and Sometimes, you know, that's been where we haven't actually finished with the ultimate result. We haven't got a win in the end, but, um, you know, people have stood in the stands and enjoyed what they've come to see. Now, ultimately, I know as a coach and the experience I've seen that that will turn into wins in time. That'll be, you know, games where it's close halfway through the third quarter and we get across the line and get that win. But what I can guarantee our members and supporters is we've got a, a hungry group of players. They're young, they're enthusiastic. They're going to put a standard, they're going to put a level of footy out there this year that's, you know, 12 months on from what you've seen last year and you're going to be, you're going to be really pleased with what you see. Um, I'll back them in to do that. They're maturing as a group. Um, I did have the opportunity to listen to Tim and he made some great points around what we've been able to do as a footy club off the field and that's put us in a really strong position on the field. Some of the acquisitions we've made, um, how well our list managers did in this draft and the last, you know, we've, we've added some fantastic talent to our group. So I'm really confident as a coach that I can back these guys in to, to put a product out there or you know, show our members our DNA week in, week out. Next question is from Chris Marshall. Um, a player who has a lot of intrigue is Darcy Fogarty. Um, we've seen him in the midfield in spurts. Is this something we'll continue to see going forward? Uh, well, if you ask Darcy, yes, <laughs> he likes getting in there. And, and look, to be honest, we, we don't mind mixing it up. And uh, for Darcy, it's a tough one. He, he gets a tough gig most weeks, especially at the moment we saw on the weekend with, with Tech's not available. Uh, Darcy was our, our key forward and he gets a lot of attention. He gets the best back on him most weeks. Um, it's quite a challenging role down there. And he's not the only one, Riley as well. Riley Thilthorpe, for a young uh, key position player coming in, that's quite a challenge for these guys. And, and one that they're up to and they're going to get there in time. Um, I, look, let's ne never say never. Uh, we, we get Darcy around the ball if we need some impact. I'd like to hope our midfielders are able to get that done and deliver him the ball more often than not and we can leave him in the forward line because he's, um, he's quite potent in front of goal. Question from Kieran Wallace is, um, Riley O'Brien and Ben Keyes have been elevated to a leadership group, which is fantastic additions um, as they've had a couple of really strong seasons. Who else is, in, is impressing by taking more, more responsibility in that leadership space? 
Yeah, well, that's probably one of the most exciting parts of where we're at. We've got, I mean, I could list off you know, 15 or 20 players in, in this space, but to name a few, although I'll, I'll end up uh, probably hearing about it tomorrow if they're watching tonight. I mean, Ned McHenry is one who, um, he's an energy, he's, um, he's got his own style of leadership and he's brought that throughout the pre-season. It's important for guys like him through what is a grind. It's a really tough pre-season. Um, it's really what keeps guys in the game or, or takes them out in the end is getting through pre-season. He's been incredible with his leadership and enthusiasm. Uh, you've got Chase Jones behind the ball. You've got McPherson behind the ball. Jordan Butts is another one who's stepping up. You know, given the opportunity last year where he was forced into a key position role as a young player and, and he stood up week in, week out. He was probably unlucky not to receive an award in the end for for the performances he put out during the year. But um, that's just a few that I can name. Jordan Dawson is one that has come to our club and we've been really impressed by his leadership. He's taken some time and, and, and really um, eased his way into the group, but we're starting to see that come through now. Um, but as you mentioned, you know, to get guys like Ben Keyes, to get Riley O'Brien into our leadership group, um, you know, they're fantastic leaders and they're going to do a fantastic job this year. Uh, the, the way you talk about... Um... Jordan Butts and also Chase Jones behind the balls led us into the next question from Michael Goss. In recent drafts, we've selected forwards and midfielders. Are you happy with our stocks that we have behind the ball in the defensive half? Yeah, I, my, my, last, my last answer probably, probably gave you, yeah, I'm, I'm actually, and I know it's a tough one. I think on the weekend, the boys probably had a day we, we, we'd like to forget. Um, but in saying that, you know, what we saw last year, I'm really pleased with the development of our backline. Um, I think we're only going to improve. We're, we're extremely young behind the ball. Uh, you know, Tom Duday, who's been a leader of the club and will be a future leader of this footy club, you know, what we're asking of him for the age he's at at the moment and the experience he's got, he's a lot. He's done a fantastic job in that. But what we are seeing now is some of these others stand up. You know, Brownie's been an outstanding member of this footy club. He's now taken his leadership to another level. Uh, Brody Smith, again, he's been in our, he's in our leadership group. When we are able to get that group together, that six, seven or eight players that will play through that position, and you know, we are rock solid behind the ball, and I'm, I'm confident as a coach, as is, um, as, is our, you know, assist, as our assistant coaches and our coaching group, that um, you know, that's an area we'll be strong in this year. Question from Matthew Thomas. What makes our rebuilding list unique to the other sides that are in a similar position? And what are we doing to ensure ultimate success in the future? Yeah, great question. And, and that's one that you know, we've done a lot of research uh, you know, over several years now looking into rebuilds, looking into uh, what clubs have done in the past in a similar position to what we're in. Now, by no means will we copy other clubs, but it, it is important to look back on history and see what they've gone through. Um, there are a number of clubs that I could use as an example. I won't tonight that we've taken a lot of information from. Uh, and, and we've looked through and we're really confident with the way we're tracking at this point in time. It, it is a hard position that we're in at the moment and I, it's hard for everyone involved in the organisation when, when wins aren't ticking over week in, week out. But what I can say to our members and supporters is it turns so fast. Um, stick with us because you know, we're, we're a lot closer than you think. And if you look at last year and you see some of the teams that were able to challenge, some of the teams that were able to beat during the year, you know, one of them went on and won the premiership. Now, it's not all about one game, um, and, and we know that, but we'll continue to work hard to be a lot more consistent in that space. And, and um, I'm really confident before you know it, um, you know, our members and supporters will be really enjoying what they're seeing and results will look after themselves. Final questions from Christopher Camp. The success of our AFLW team, and as, as we mentioned, the AFL men's program is starting to to rise through the rebuild, is there things that you can take from the women's team? Um, we've made mention that they've had, you know, three grand finals in five years. Is there anything you can take from, from them? We do it daily. We're, uh, look, I, it makes you so proud when you watch our women's team play for you. Um, you know, every weekend we know what performance we're going to get, led by the ultimate in Chelsea Randall. Uh, Chelsea does a lot of work with us and I, I talk to Chelsea regularly because she's such an outstanding leader. Um, you know, Doc Clark, as, as coach, Doc and I will constantly talk around game plan. In fact, when you watch the girls play, it, it is, um, it puts a smile on my face sometimes to see the way they go about it. And there's a lot of similarities in the way we're playing. You know, we're one club. Um, and I know our guys at the moment are so proud of, about the way the girls are going about it. Um, 
so I, so we look forward to the time where the girls can sit back and, and watch. And I'm, as I said to you before, so it's going to be a lot closer than you think. And they'll be proud of what we're putting out on the ground. No, thanks very much for joining us, Nixie. It's obviously a, a busy time of the year for you, but we can feel your excitement and, and we're all excited too for the season. So good luck for, for the year. Appreciate it. Thanks, Horst. Thanks, everyone.